Hallelujah. We say to you all that have joined us via the live stream, Shabbat Shalom. May the riches of our great King, the Abba of creation, Almighty Yahweh, may His Shalom, His Shalom rest upon us all. That we delight in the comfort of the sure knowledge of the revelation. Yoshua HaMashiach. That there is a vivid light of Torah that flows from our bosom and it emanates his character. It shows the excellence of his Ahavan. And it calls us to rejoice. I'm privileged. I'm more than privileged. For the Abba to grant a day as such, that he calls it a Shabbaton, that he gives us Shabbat. We can rest in the comfort, the assurance what Torah speaks to us this day. And the accolades of great honor as we reverence him that will flow from the vessels into the heavens guarded by the Melachim, that he may delight today above all things, above all things, that we may bring a great chafet, a delight, that he is satisfied to the bosom of our great king. He is real. He is not of the category of a god. He is supreme. He is mighty, and there is none else like him. There is no superlatives, no adjectives, verbs that express his character and his beauty. Only he can reveal that unto us. It must be uncovered. It must be gala. And when that is uncovered, then we love him the greater. It is one thing that we tend to forget above all things is that almighty Yahweh, that he loves himself. We don't think in that dimension. We don't even consider that because we truly don't love one another like we love ourselves. But Almighty Yah, he loves himself. That he gave us a Torah, simply instructions of life, how to live, that will produce an abundance of the peri, the fruit of sadaqa, of righteousness, his character. That we would be like him because if he is Kodesh, we must be as well. So he loves himself greatly. He loves his appearance. He loves whom he is. He loves his Hamashiach, his word that created all things. That Yoshak Nasal, that delivers us and snatch us out of the grips of hell. That we all deserve. And that we all have merited that. Because of our ways. The sins that are pronounced. In our personalities. Our character. Because we see no light of the power of his Hamashiach. Where there is light. There is rejoicing. You can go into the midst of the deepness of darkness. And there's light. Everything and everyone is out. So he's given us the light of the day for the moment. That we may come before his presence to rejoice. And delight in the abundance of his great riches. And there is no doubt. No speculation. It is of a great certainty that I know. I know who I am. Nothing, nothing at all 
bothers me that I denounce, renounce my place. Nothing. Nothing at all. That's a fact. Song said in the days, who's on your side? I know what it said. But I shall stand. I want to teach today, preach, kara, use, I guess, profanity if it comes, but to declare the very nature and the demeanor of Yah, and show you the genuineness of his great power, and who shall he reconcile, whereby the light shall come forth out of them. As I was laboring the other day, there was a word that continued to serenade, dance in my mind. It continued to fill my thought. I could not remove my mind off one word. I wanted to research it to its fullness, to the depths of its creation into the linguists or the linguistics of this nation and above all in the language of my forefathers Abraham Yitzchok Yachol see how the prophet spoke on this one word and see if it is defined by Yah's definitive or by man's speculation there's one thing I must say to us Yisrael we're not students to speak from a depth and a perch of definitives and we know what we're saying. We will debate things when we have no knowledge of it. We will show the verbose of our arrogance. We don't even have knowledge of what the word implies, the application of the words, what it, it expresses, and what it defines. We are the authoritarians on everything without spending time to understand. So as I labored at the beginning of this past week, I could not wait until I got in the house and began to look and read from the Torah. I want to teach from one word today, tradition. Just that singular word. Perdition. I want to define it by some of the most studious research in the annals of man to understand language, languages, to create within the context of a language what we would say a linguist, that one that has created a linguistics or a speech to produce a syntax or a sentence or words properly aligned together that will give us comprehension of what one is trying to express. And there is no greater linguist than Yang. And the reason he is the greatest of all linguists is this reason. One simple reason, can I tell us? Because every call, every dabarim, every promise, of all money Yahweh is tahor, it is pure. So when he speaks, he doesn't speak from speculation. He doesn't speak because he is unlearned. He speaks from a pillar of authority because all languages comes from Yah. And it is one thing about languages. One of the most pronounced characteristics of any language is this. It confuses. And they all spoke the same language. And Yah confounded the language. And so every language from that moment has been confounded. So we must have men that love Yah and daughters that are astutious and seek out the true identity of his great beauty. It's great honor. Yes. We must labor, men. Hallelujah. We must study to show ourselves approved unto Almighty Yahweh. Yes. 
I want to define the word perdition. The word perdition in our language is a noun. And the grass root or the foundational meaning of this word is, quote, fact. F-A-C-T. Fact. There is no doubting in a fact. One plus one is two. It's a fact. You can't distort that. Fact, fact, when it is factual, there is no altering, and you certainly cannot alter it in any way. Fact of being lost and destroyed. Perdition. Profoundly state that you are lost and you are going to be destroyed. Loss through calamity, the great agonies of this life. And those things that allure you and draw you that your mind is never at rest. Loss of calamity of the nephesh. It says soul here, or the souls. It indicates a total ruin. And destruction. When there is something that is ruined, there is no raising that up again. It is brought to total ruins. You can't raise it up. When they demolish a building, you can sift through the stones all you want to. You can't raise it again. It implies perdition. is to do away with. It is like one having a piece of garment. It is time to do away with it. They discard it. They throw it away. It has no value. has no purpose. It has no meaning. To do away with, destroy, lose, throw away. Because it has no value. None whatsoever. Perhaps with intense or... Great power of force to bring it to the ultimate destruction. In the theological aspect, condition of damnation, spiritually ruined, state of souls in hell, eternal damnation, bottomless pits. So the definers of Torah, when they were searching to find a word that would be acceptable to the words Chabal, ha, Chabal, the damnation, the destruction of Yah, they could only find one, perdition. And the words Chabal, it was not pronounced in the Torah, but eight times. That's through the message of the prophets, the Navim. It is tucked away and hidden in the books that we call the lost books. And so Yah in this hour, why in this hour? Because it is the Yom, the time of his great judgment. That he began to open the wisdom of his finite, intelligent spiritual mind. He begins to pour that upon simple men that are unlearned, uneducated. But they have a warrior's ruach. There's one thing about a warrior, he will be faithful in everything. Not a soldier boy. We need warriors. And so Yah was inclined... To send forth the power of his living word. In the representation of the one we know as Yoshua Hamashiach. Is only Yah that rescue, snatch away, delivers, and make free. So no other God can do that. 
No other God can do that. Only the Most High can. He should take preeminence in our mind. So he caused the son to come in the likeness of flesh. He gave him a charge and a call. To deliver my elect. My boy here. And sign their names. In the dumb. And by the blood. And so in the process of that great agony of trial, the last, one of the last events of his life, he yielded himself before the Abba and he prayed a prayer. He knew that time in the natural form of the flesh was finished. He began to intrigue his Abba. These are the words that flowed from the very volume of his heart unto Almighty Yahweh, found in Yochachanan Yachachan John, chapter 17 and verse 12. He said to the Abba, while I was with them in the Ulam, in the world, he says, I shema, I kept, I preserved, I guarded them with the hedge of the thorns, with the crown of my suffering. That's why they embedded the crown of thorns upon the head of Yahshua. We need men to teach us and preach to us today truth. Not some kind of religious euphoric of feel nice. I don't intend for you to feel nice when you're finished today. And I frankly do not give a damn if you don't love me. Everything that happened to that word, we can find the significance in Torah. He said, I, shima, I kept them, I preserved them. I kept them in the power of your name. I kept them by your Hashim. Not in the name of God. Not in the name of Lord. But I kept them. I preserved them. I preserved their minds. To give them the assurance of their calling. By the power and the revelation of your name. And I've been hidden through the ages of darkness. Of sin and rebelliousness. The whole house of Ephraim and Yehuda. He said, those that you father, those that you father, he said that you have nothing. You have given. You have granted. You were the one that purposed in your heart, not me. You were the one that set forth these. He says, I've kept them. I've kept all of them. Yes. And he uses the words, lo, none, yes. not one. Yeah. Not one hair of their heads has been lost. He said, none of them is lost. And he preferenced that, but the son of Tradition. Why? That the katu, the scripture, may be fulfilled. So I ask us this question as I proceed. Are there are those that are perdition, sons of perdition. Does the Torah give us details of that? Can we identify what perdition is? What do we do? As we began to use the most valuable resource to answer the question. It is only from the written Sefer, the book of life. There is only one book of life. There is only one book of truth. 
And I read from that book today. I've not lost any, not one, except that one that was created for death. We must understand as I began this teaching, we have negated to understand that Yah loves himself. He loves me. He loves himself. Even us in our convoluted, vile state of what we call love, you had a choice. You had a covenant and a place that were only whole 200. You will pick those out that you think you love. Let's get real, all right? You're not going to exclude yourself. And so we try to judge Yah or attest the fact that he has created sons of perdition through what we call love that is so vile. We love Yah, we keep his mitzvah, his commandments. He that says he loves Yah and keeps not his commandments is a liar. And the truth, the Torah, what the righteousness of Yah is not in them. I don't care who it is. That's a fact. And so if you had a saving place for 200, who would you choose? He has always dealt with numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it began. Again. So who would you deliver? So is your love righteous? And those that do not inhabit the habitation with you, they are prediction. They are set to the outer darkness of death and destruction. We don't know yet. Our minds have been so twisted by this fable of lies that our kinsmen brought up in us in, up in, because of their ignorance. And we will fight tooth and nail to hold on to a lie. Yes. We will fight tooth and nail to hold on to a lie. Yes. We hear the truth, we become despondent. Yes. We don't like it. Yes. Yoshua did not keep any of those that were perdition. Yes. We must survey the Torah and find out yes. the application of this word. What I must do, what you must do, Yisrael. There's a nobi that is called Ezra, a prophet, messenger of Yah. And in one of his prayers, he prayed unto the Abba, unto Yah. He gives us the sure sign and signs of those. That are meant for production is found in the writings of Ezra, the fourth writings of Ezra. In chapter 7, one verse, I want to read verse 48. He says this He says, For an evil, Iraq. An evil heart has grown up in us, the nation. How many will say their heart is evil? It has grown with the burdens and the cares of the world that it doesn't give a damn about Yah. For an evil heart has grown up in us. And this heart has, it has alienated. It has alienated us from you, Almighty Yah. This is what the heart has done. It has alienated us from Yah. We don't care for him. We frankly don't give a damn. We care again. We go back to the saving place that you 
have the power to bring in 200. You will bring in some of the most vilest and the most wickedest. You will not seek out like Yermiah and see if you can find a Sadiq Ben Adam among you, a righteous man. The reason you will do that because there's an evil heart that has grown up in you. It has caused you to abandon Yah. And it has brought us into Shachar. We're corrupt. We're evil. We do evil, corrupt, vile, wicked things. The Torah is going to shine the light on you today. You can hide. But it's going to bring you out like the dirty rat you are. It has brought us into the mindset of corruption. Into shachath. Into destruction. Into demeanors that are so hellish and wicked. Only hell opens to invite us. It has brought us into the ways of death. We sin against the Most High without even conscious of guilt and shame. We lie, we cheat, we're like a dirty beast with no conscience. And because our evil minds are so evil, it has shown us, listen, not just a path, but the derech of the derechim. The rachim, the paths of perdition. We'll deal with that a little later on. And because of the paths of perdition, it has removed us far. He did not say it has removed us from. But he says it has removed us far from life, from the high yield. The strength of Torah that matures us. They make us strong and ready for the battle. We're dressed in the garments of Sadiqam with the sword of the rock. The word flows from our mouths. It's laughter and folly. And above all, enjoying the wicked. Laugh with them and eat with them. I don't do it. I don't care who it is. It has brought us into the paths of perdition, our evil minds, and removed us from the ways. Far, far from life. This is what baffled my mind as a, as a student. I'm a student. I'm the master of nothing. I'm a student. I'm a student of life. I'm not a master of anything. I'm not a master of the Torah. I'm not a master for teacher. I'm a student. Because there's one thing about a student. A student will always grow. He grows. I'm a student. I master nothing. I don't master this life. I don't master the Torah. I realize how. Idra am when I search the book. This is what he says. Uh, and that, not just a few. Not just a few of us. And that, not just a few of us, but almost all who have been uh, bara, created by Yah. We have gone the way of perdition. It's only by the Hasset and the great kindness of Yah, even as we yes. walk in the ways of the wicked, we have created and it progenerates the same kind of wicked heart in me as I spew out the vileness of my heart to those that I think I love. And almost all, almost all, not just a few, but almost all that have been created from the beginning. Yah, 
never intend to say, but whom he is going to save. I will prove it. You can't be saved if you are a son of perdition. I don't pray that prayer and never have in my ignorance for anyone. I pray your will be done with her, Yah, with him, with that one. That's the only prayer I pray. And that's a fact. Not just son, but almost all. That's why our Zachin Benjamin constantly remind us that broad, wide is the way of Shacha. Shacha. That leads to destruction. He tells us many there be that go there at that gate. And straight, Yosha, and Nar Sarah. Straight and refined is the way that leads to life. And he uses this words, me oath, and few there be, few that will go into the gate. Our minds are evil. It begins with our own hearts that we realize how evil we are. And we have gone diametrically opposed and opposite to what Torah says. You can never get into the kingdom but by this book. You don't know righteous judgment. You don't know kindness or love. It is only expressed in this book. Well, how do you know who is of prediction? That is the sure sign that Ezra gave us. But let me show you here what Shaul says in 2 Thessalonica. 2 Thessalonians. So I propose the question to you. If we believe that those that are of perdition can be saved, answer this question then. 2 Thessalonica, chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. We're always ready to speak from the volume of our words to incriminate a messenger of Yah. What I deal with is the sins of a nation that is so deplorable. They have gone away from Yah because their hearts are evil and their minds are. Now, you deceive you. It is the vile, evil, hidden man of your heart that where you hide your sins. You hide your evil ways. You had your thoughts and your corruption in your own vile hearts. It's not a man, a messenger of Yah. You can try to escape that responsibility, but you will not do it with me. Let no man deceive you by any means. For the day shall not come. What day? The day of Yah's judgment. We're in the day. We're in the day today that he comes to judge us in his presence. For the day will not come except there come a falling away. You will find those that shall not fall. They're going to bow down to the gates of darkness and hell. They're going to give their hearts over under the pursuit of that which produces no life. There's only one thing we can turn to that will grant us life. And that is for us to live as Yoshua HaMashiach. And when we destroy our flesh, we impel it, then we gain. For me to die is gain. Not just the death of the grave, but me, for me to die from the nature of sin. And from the vile activities of my flesh, I shall gain knowledge of the promises of Yah. I shall gain wisdom of the promises of Yah. I shall gain understanding of the promises of Yah. It cannot happen unless, unless, except there come a falling away first. That it talks about the man of sin. It talks about this one. It is... His vile, reprehensible approach. He defied Yah. He said, 
in the heavens. We know him as Hashatan, the devil. He sinned against Yah. He rebelled. He was arrogant. His pride. And that is one thing that we don't like to deal with with me, do we? Our own pride lifts us up to denounce the ways of Yah and to make excuses for. Why not make an excuse for me? You only make excuses for those you think you love. It won't happen unless there comes first a falling away. And then it says the man that of sin, what is hatta? What is sin? For we know that sin is when one transgress, defy the Torah of Yah. When the man of our heart tells us, to defy with great admiration and inspiration what the Torah says. We reject what the Torah says. We make excuses. We find reasons for others, but never a reason to love Yah. He says that this man of sin... He shall be revealed. There shall be a galah. He shall be uncovered. Yah uncovers our hearts today. He uncovers our minds today to let us know it's evil. It's wicked. It's vile. And it despises O Maria. That man must be revealed. Because that man is the man of prediction. You're not going into the kingdom. He called, he says he must be revealed. And he is called the son of perdition. The son of perdition. It says that in Thessalonica, doesn't it? Will you hold that with your finger in the book? And go back to Yachahan 17 and 12. Will you do that? It says on this note, Yahshua says, I've kept all, lost none, but the son of perdition. He said, lost none but the son of perdition. He calls this one who's coming after the very nature of darkness. He calls him the son of perdition. I ask you, so Hashatan, as a young lad in my ignorance, we would pray for the devil. That was our ignorance. We thought that we could pray for the devil, that, quote, God save the devil. I am quite sure that I am not the only one that's ever done that. But that was our ignorance. We didn't know. Your calls him the son of perdition. He said there was one that was elected. Was that one a Hebrew Israelite? Sure he was. There shall be one that rises up with his heel to bruise or to come against Yoshua Hamashiach. The tribe of Don. To bruise, to destroy him. How do you know that? I'm a student. He calls Yehuda Iscariot. The son of perdition. And he calls this one. That comes after the working of Hashatan. He's going to be revealed. What is the son of perdition? What did your what did Yahuda do? You've never betrayed Yah, have you? You never betrayed his word. You never denounced his word. You never obfuscated your responsibility to fulfill the word. Because of someone wicked in your evil mind. To include that one. You've never done that, have you? 
He calls this one that deceives you. You think it's me. No, it's you. My friend. You have deceived yourself by lying to you. He calls him the son of perdition. Can the devil be saved? Is there any promise of tikva for him? Not one drop. He's going to damn him. And every nation he has brought forth. Again, Yah loves himself. He loves him. He gave us the instruction of his code of righteousness. Not these filthy, nida, funky rags we wear. Our minds are full of blood with sin. We perpetrate it. We do it. We fulfill it. And we frankly and flat like do not give a damn. It's a fact. This is what we do. In verse 4 of 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. He said, this one oppose and exalt himself above him that is called Yahweh. We never do that. Ezra says, not a few, but all that have been created have gone the way of perdition and death. We exalt ourselves above Yah. We think that our righteousness supersedes his righteousness. And our judgment that is not from Torah is based upon a mind that is evil and corrupt. A mind that is a perdition. And you will uh, incriminate others, me, for your own sin. But you're going to pay the price for your own wickedness. No one else. We never oppose Yah, do we? We don't oppose the messenger because he speaks to the facts of our ill and our wickedness. We don't oppose him. We don't uh, rise up in our spirits against him, do we? Sure you do. I know the weakness of flesh. There's one thing as a young man I always wanted. I didn't want to hear about the blessings and the riches of Yah. I wanted to be cut, reproved. Every time the man preach. And if you do not do that to me, you haven't preached to me. When a man doesn't bruise me and cut me and reveal those hidden things, he hasn't done the job as a surgeon with precision. Because the Torah of Yah, it is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged swords. They call that Sheikh, I believe, razor, the two-edged sword. Reason. You don't cut me, you haven't talked to me. We oppose him, we exalt ourselves above the Torah of Yah. The one that is worship of Shochath, so that he as Almighty Yah. We present ourselves as the Most High, the one with authority and power. So that he, as the Most High, our minds present evil thoughts uh, that supersedes the Torah of Yah, doesn't it? Uh, and convince us that I'm right when you know you are yes. working evil. Yes. And you're wrong. You're not right. You're evil and you're wrong and you do evil. Your sins will find you out. Listen, nothing gets past me. I know we have women that are weak and over the many years, men that are weak. And I deal with them tenderly because I know they're weak. I know they're immature. If we go out here to move uh, 5,000 pounds, I, I know what I can to pick to help me move 5,000 pounds. We can move it together. You all understand. Yah knows that we can't bear the sins, but yet we bear our sins. Because we don't confess our sins, do we? Yeah, yeah. You won't go to no one and confess your sins. Yeah. We're hypocritical, but you know all of my sins. Perdition. He opposes Yah. He shows himself to be Yah. And then it says he sits in the bed of Yah, showing himself that he is Yah. We come to Yah's house. And we sit before the presence of Yah. We denounce him. 
We get angry. We question him. We never question the motive or the intensity of the vile thing that rises up in our hearts. And we think we're going into the king in hell. You're going to lift your eyes. Perdition. Now, don't forget the meaning. That doesn't fear me. I know it doesn't fear you. He never intended for you to fear that. He intended for you to love him. The fear of Yah. See, the fear of Yah is the hate that flow at we and your lies and your corruption, your evil doing. See, that's when you fear Yah, not because uh, I'm going to hell. That's not why you fear him. We don't fear him. Hell doesn't mean a damn thing to us. It produces no fear. Our sins don't produce fear. When that is the case, you are a child of perdition. Well, I pray for my son. I am not praying for the peace. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Listen to what the writers and the writer of the writings of Jubilee is found in Jubilees chapter 10. It would be great value if you read the whole chapter. I doubt if we do it. He expounds upon the prayer of Nuach, the one that rests in the comfort of Yah's Torah. He began to see the unclean demonic powers that were usurping power over the minds of, of the sons of Nuach. You see, those in that family, Yah brought them in. And it was just enough room for them and Yah's creation. If he gives you an ark to bring 200 in, you're going to get your wicked mama and your wicked daddy, but the righteous man that serve Yah. We frankly don't give a damn about him. You're going to call upon your vile sons and daughters and what they're going to do after the door is open. They're going to go forth with the same evil and same vile ways and the same corrupt ways. That's what they're going to do. And so the messenger, the writer of Noah, great challenge. Jubilees, chapter 10, verse 3. It says, a Noach, he began to pala, to pray before Almighty Yahweh, his sovereign master. A sovereign ruler is one that has the complete authority and mandates unto me the purpose of his calling, his protocol. He began to pray unto Almighty Yahweh, the sovereign master, and said, he identified him. He gave honor to his name. He says, Yahweh. He says, Abba, you are the father of the Ruachim, of the seven Ruachim of Yam. Ruach HaChodash, the Ruach of Wisdom, the Ruach of Fear. He says, of the Ruachim of all flesh, who have showed us chassid kindness, Unto me, you have shown me great beauty of your kindness, your great love. He says, and you have, listen, he didn't say I have, and you have saved me and my sons from the waters and the floods. The waters of the floodgates of hell flow open. He did not say I have my prayers. You saved me. Yah saved. No one else but Almighty Yahweh. You have saved us from the waters of flood. And then he says here, and you have not caused me to perish as you did with the sons of perdition. Again, it identifies them as the sons of perdition. As Thessalonica, you're in your shoe, and you did not cause me to perish with the sons of perdition. Eight righteous ones, and every last one of them, in their multiplication, because Yah loves them, they all died and they perish. 
He calls them the sons of perdition. The sons of perdition. There is no tikvah. They were birthed for death. They were birthed for the fire as those were birthed for the flood of death. Well, I pray for my son. I pray for my grandboy. There is no grandchildren in the, in the kingdom of the hierarchy of Yah. The sons and daughters. There's no grandbaby, no cousin, no niece. It's either a brother, a sister, an ak, or an ahota. There are no nieces and nephews and grandbabies. We are the sons of Yah. These are the sons of perdition. The sons of Habal. The sons of death. They were meant and made for the destruction of the fire. Yah, in all of that purpose, he is sent to us to warn us. You don't know my love. I say to us all the time, you don't know me. Because if you did, you will not treat me the way you do. You don't know me. I tell those you will never meet a man like me again because Yah will not even entrust you with a real man. I know you're weak. And I deal with you like you're weak too. And try to help you like a weak one as well. May I please, sir? Do that, my friend. You did not destroy me like you did the sons of perdition. They were sons of perdition. Just like Hashatan is the son of perdition. Just like Yahura Iscariot was a son of perdition. Hear the word of Yah here. He says, it was your free unmerited favor. It has been great toward me. And he says, and great has been your kindness to my life, my nephesh, my being. He says unto you, this man, as he saw the minds of his son and daughter-in-law began to foment evil intent, the hearts began to grow weary and even. He says, let, if you will, let your free unmerited favor be lifted up upon my sons. And he says, and let not the wicked spirit rule over them. What spirit rule in your mind? Is it one that favors Yah? Is it one that sings the great songs of praises to Yah? Or is it a wicked spirit? He says, least they should be destroyed from the earth. When that mind that opposed Yah, it is a mind of perdition, is going to be destroyed. Your mind is the composition of what you are. The way you think, the way you act, that's what you are. And the way you are, the way you will reveal. While you all were gone, my natural sister and it would be a great pleasure if they were listening today, I doubt it. And I say without any fear, I have no relationship with that people. My natural brother and my living aunt, they call and ask if they have some sweet potatoes and some collards. I said, come. I wanted to get them off the grounds. My natural aunt looks like this vile thing out of the dungeons of hell. Wicked old woman. She knew she came dressed wrong. I said, you can't dress that way here. I don't give a damn how old she is. And that ignorant natural brother said, hold up, buddy. You don't come here with that bull shysting. Don't give him a damn thing. Take it. You take it. I don't know who you think you're dealing with. 
And I said to my Israel, Yah, I'm so glad. I'm not a part of that people. I'm not a part of the mannerism, the ways, the actions, the activities, the social events. I'm so glad. I don't smile with them. I don't laugh with them. And I got them off. I said, I'll pick you some greens, old woman. I got to go. I need to pick up some things from Lowe's. We gravitate to them and we laugh with them. We're friendly with them. I'm not. I'm not. And look at this old woman that her mind is so evil. You can't even talk about God to them. I want you to pray for everybody. Pray for your sister and her children. I'm going to finish today. Why would I pray and waste Yah's prayer and energy? Yahshua says, I pray not for them. Yeah. And I don't. I pray for these yeah. you have given me. Yeah. And you keep them from the hour yeah. that shall draw the world. And she's asking me to pray for my natural sisters. Sons. As the old folks will say, I put them in Yah's hands and his judgment is great. And I don't mess with it. So my natural sister tells me, my son, his father, he puts him in the hospital, I see you. I say, hold up. Your son brutally assaulted his father. Now this is what an evil mind is. She said, yes. So she began to elaborate how they love each other. and They spend time together. They pick each other up. She says, I'm here to take care of his child. And then she tells me, I want to get with my family. I said, well, that is your family. No, I'm talking about my family, my aunt. This is your son. I, I, I have a construed, construed uh, uh, image of what family is, and that's all right. So in my inquisitive nature, I ask, what happened? And why did he put his natural father in ICU? Well, his natural father was sleeping with his fiance that he has a baby by. I said to my Israel, they call that love, though. They love each other. They love each other. You hide it. I don't hide it. You covet it and cover it. I see this boy brutal lies his daddy like that. He just can't blame the daddy. He should have did the same to her then. The daddy was just taking advantage of what was offered to him. But this is what you all call love. Oh, my family would never do that. You're a flat out yes. fool of a liar. Yeah. Cousins sleeping with cousins. and Can folks taking advantage? You come to family reunion, they're coming there to lust. And they're not looking at strangers. This is the twisted, demented mind we have. We don't give a damn about Almighty Yahweh. Yeah. The prayer of this man, I pray this prayer. Yeah, what sons? You my sons. Don't let the evil spirits of the world draw them. And seduce them. Bring them into the covenant of promise that they can rest from the 
proposition of darkness. Don't let the wickedness rule over them, unless you should destroy them from the earth. We're going to ever proceed in the ways of Almighty Yah. We must have a zeal of righteousness. And you will know you have a zeal of righteousness as to how you profess and speak on the word. I ask you that are listening, you, the small uchel, congregation of a few, what is your conversation about? What do you talk about? David, in all of his great battles, he understood the great agony of his enemies. Shaul was a man that, in his letters unto the host of Yisrael, scattered throughout the Ulam, he called them Goyim or Gentiles. They were scattered among every people. You could not identify them. And that's a fact. I'll teach you on that. So he writes unto the gathering there of uh, Felicia or Philippians. Chapter 1, verse 28. I want you all to hear this. He exhorts them, he encourages them to be strong in their zest, their desire, their passion for Yah. You show the zest of your passion as... Your great Ahava for Yah as how you tend with me and I with you. And he encouraged them that you must be, as my natural brother would say to me, uh, baby boy, don't be a pancake flipping and flopping uh, up today, down tomorrow, over the next day. There must be consistency. It must be a thorough fluidity of one's walk, passion. It must be consistency there. So he encouraged them. He knew the opposition. So he says to them in Philippians 128, he says in nothing, listen, I don't care what happened. He means what he says in low, in nothing. Uh, he said, don't even be terrified by your adversaries. I don't care what man says, what he does. I don't care what woman does or what one says. Don't allow that to, to cause you to question Yah and to compromise the standards of Yah. Don't be terrified by your adversaries. He says you must understand every tongue that rise up against Yisra'ya shall be brought into condemnation. He says your adversaries, you know that they don't love Yah. Why? He says, which is to them. They're your adversaries. They don't hate you, they hate Yah. He says, which is to them an evident. It is a fact, token of prediction. These are the ones of prediction. Fact that they are going to be lost. They're going to die in the ways of their sins. You can pray for them all day until your head explodes. You're not going to save what? That's a fact. In token of perdition, he said, but to you, it is your shock, it is your sure, it is salvation. And that is of Yah. Your adversaries are of Yah. Your salvation is of Yah. He is the one that, that created your deliverance. To you to understand your adversaries, uh, it is an evident that these are the ones of perdition. They were birthed to be your adversaries. They were brought forth to be your adversaries. For what purpose? To show the strength of Yah's your shock. To show you the power of his deliverance. Yes. To show you his strength of assurance. Yes. I'm not disturbed by what the world does. The joy of my fulfillment is not what the world does or what men do or what women do. 
I sleep every night, I must confess. The temperature in the house was somewhat, it fluctuated greatly last night, so I awakened around one, began to talk a little bit to her, and I could not go back to sleep. I wanted to get up and study. I said, I'm not going to do that, yeah. I looked over, it was two. I looked again, it was three. I said, I'm not getting up. And I lay there until the next time I woke up, it was 7 a.m. And I hastily, I got myself up. I'm not buying that, that I have some kind of sleep. What, what is the term? The, uh, no, no, no. Yeah. In some years, I'm not buying that. Because the day before that Thursday, I think I went to bed at 9.30 because I had worked hard. And then I got up at, I was getting up every morning around 5 because the ball in the greenhouse, Simeon said, well, can you get the greenhouse for me? I said, all right, I'll get it. To make sure the greenhouse was going, so it was cold and frigid. You understand? And so once I would get up, I could not go back to sleep. And so... I said I would stay up to 12 and get up at 5, but I certainly could not a few days do that. Let me get back to this. He, I, I want you to hear this, Yisraya. Here's a prophecy of Baruch. The pensman, the scribe of Yeremiah. He writes to us. He writes to us concerning one thing. The Acharit. The end time. The uttermost. The death. The completion of all things. In 2 Baruch, chapter 30, the first five verses. Now you tell me that if this doesn't coincide with the prophecy of Yahshua, I'll read it. And I'll be careful in my expression as to what the daughter says. He says, and it will, not maybe, it is emphatic, no doubt about it, and it will happen after these Things, they are things. Uh, there's a constitution of the word of Yah that there must be certain things transpired. Uh, he said, when these, the time of appearance, uh, of who? He talks about the anointed one. Who is the anointed one? It's Yoshua HaMashiach. When the anointed one has been fulfilled, when he has restored all things back unto Yah as uh, you are commanded as the word was fulfilled to do. Huh? It says, and he returns with his great splendor and honor. He has finished the work. He returns for the Bokhia, the elect remnant of Yah. That then all who sleep, who have died in the Tigva, yes. who have died waiting for the promise of him, he says they're going to room, they're going to rise up, they're going to get up. You got to get up. Yes. Yeah. Jehu says, We that are alive and remain shall not prevent them that are dead in your sure from getting up. And the prophet here speaks profoundly. Yeah. I want you to hear it. Yeah. When that same word that raised him up, it should be the same word of life to raise them up that have died in the promise. You can't sell yourself to some little delusion or trick it. A trinket for your flesh and your emotions. You will die in your damnable wickedness. You can continue to ride that hell-bound horse your own. It's going to take you right to hell. Well, what horse? Your ignorance of stupidity, your mind, your heart that deceives you. I don't deceive you. And no man shall have deceived him. And all of my ignorance, when I found out I'm ignorant, I correct it. And I'm not ashamed to correct my ignorance. You are. But I'm not. He says, and it will happen at that time that those treasures, mine, will be open and which the number of nephesh, the number now of nephesh, of who the righteous were kept. There's a number that he is going to keep. There's a number you're sure kept 11. He lost none but the son of perdition. 
He said the number, the number of the nephesh of the Sadiqim uh, were kept. And they will go out. And they will go out and the multitudes uh, and the multitudes of the nephesh will appear together. In one assemblage of one mind. One mind. And the first ones will enjoy themselves. Uh, and the last ones uh, will not be sad. So when he brings forth the dead out of the grave, we will not prevent that alive and remaining uh, they shall be caught up in the power to prove unto us, and there shall be great, there's going to be a cassandra of a voice. You can't raise your damn voice to Yah now in that day. You're not going to be a part of it. And we're going to see, oh my, you granted me of this visit to see this, to be a part of it, to be, to see your great power. And my, how I've denied you and denounced you and have not been faithful unto you. He says, for they know that the time has come of which it is said that it is the end of times. They will know, they will rejoice, and they will know. He says unto this, in the next verse 4, he says, but unto the nephesh of the rich or the wicked, unto the nephesh of the wicked, Will the more waste away when they shall see all these things? When the wicked see the power of Yah's restitution, we don't want to see that. We ought to see that in the nation among our brothers and sisters to see how Yah restores one that will make us glad and change our ways. But because we have an evil mind, we don't give a damn. We don't care. You don't give a damn about it, he won. Listen to the next verse. For they know, for the wicked now, for the yada, as all will say, I know that I know, for they know that their torment, I show you the one that's going to be tormented, all right? Their torment has come, has come, that their perdition Perditions, perdition, perditions have arrived. Yes. Yeah. You're going to know, Israel. You don't know that you are in perdition today? They're going to know you. They're going to know that you were made for hell. I'm glad we got someone, the Achim that we promote and I will promote to labor, to study, to be strong men. Your daughters, shut your damn mouths and obey your husband and love him. I said to one one day, I said, I want to ask you a question. I said, on a job, if there's a manager that is like a jackass and clown with women, they don't respect him, do they? When the break is over, 15 pass, they sit there at 20 pass, at 25. He doesn't know how to approach them to say it's the break time because they will repudiate him. But you let the manager that is sharp as a dime. You say, Dawid, uh, 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 Rafael, I saw you, you were over four minutes on your break. Now don't do it again. See, that man is honest with integrity. She'll begin to honor that manager. And her works will become more refined. And the more she worked, when the man sees that, he said, John, we got one that can run that section of the business. Get her off there. She's prompt. She's on time. She's courteous. Because she fears her damn job. She fears the man. See, that's what a strong man produces. He brings fear. A weak man doesn't bring that. So that manager that says, no, don't do it again. I will warn you this time. Next time I will write you up and the third time you're out of the door. You think she's not cognitive of that in conscience? You tell me that doesn't produce a fear in her? See, we don't believe you. That's why we don't do what he commands us. Can't go around. We need strong men. 
And I say to all you wives, the more you honor your man, the more he will love you. It is the truth. When you honor your man, he will learn how to love you and grow strong. When you dishonor him, he will hate you. You learn how to love him and to honor him. You learn how to do that. For they know that their torment shall come. They know that. And their perditions have arrived. They know that there is no way out. I will show you why. Moving quite quickly here. In Second Hefer Peter, Second Peter, as Baruch speaks of the time of the Anointed One, Peter speaks from the same threshold. Second Peter, chapter three, verse six. He tells us why he is coming and the purpose of his coming. You think that he is going to come and sing? La di da, la di di da da. You're wrong. That's what it says in Second Peter three six. Where about the world that was in the days of Noah? It says, being overflowed with water, it perished, did it? These were sons of perdition. And Yah made a promise, and He gives us the rainbow. Says. No, no more that way. But it's coming by the inferno of the fierce judgment, the fire of a living word. You're sure will be the one this living word will judge. It says, but the heavens, the Shemayim, and the Olam Chaza, which are now, you see what we see now? Although he destroyed it by the water, he says by the same word, they are kept in store. It has been preserved, it has been maintained by the same word for one thing. For what? Reserved. You understand what reserved is? It is to be put in its place for the appropriate time and the appropriate person to produce or to take and to use with it what he wants to do. It is a time. You reserve a car, you have to give a date, time when you will pick it up. So Yah has a date set and a time set. He has it. He said it is reserved to fire against what? Hear this, against the day of judgment. Was not the water, the water, the Mayim that flowed, was it not reserved for the day of judgment or the Mishpatim or the Mishpat of Yah to judge, to correct? And also perdition. Perdition, perdition of wicked men. They were born to die. They were born to be destroyed. They were born. It's amazing that this Christian philosophy has polluted our minds that one thinks that everyone in every part of the world except this vile cauldron of every kind of wickedness that spews from it. That the folks here are all right and they're going to be right. But everybody else, they're gods. They know they're going to hell, so they have to save them. This is one of the most damnable wicked nations uh, that has ever been on the face of the earth. Hallelujah. It is vile. It's repugnant. Look at our sons and daughters. Hallelujah. I said to my ears, show the day. I said, I can see why y'all said we're in that time where a man, just one man, uh, he's going to be more precious than the goals uh, and the great goals of Ophri, uh, the greatest of goals, the purest of gold, because you can't find a damn man today. You find boys. Yeah. Let me proceed. This world is reserved for the day of judgment and prediction, damnation and death of your wicked sons, your wicked daughters, your wicked grandmama, you, your wicked auntie. That's not even a word, but your wicked aunt. You can call her aunt, but an aunt. As a fact, 
If you had a, an ark of safety, who would you pick to go in? See, God loves himself. And he has picked a people. He has numbered them. And they are going in. He's going to take them to the fire. He's going to have them. I've always said this and I will say it until I die. There are men out there that do not have the ability to reach out. And we don't reach out to many. They're profound men, strong and powerful. They have an etiquette of words and power to speak. I've always said that. The enemy has done a massive job to keep men like that and me separated. I love strong men. I love strong men. Hear this, Yisraya. Can I read a little more? Can I show you a true state of what perdition is? We think I can be changed, don't we? Let's look what Yokohanan says in Revelation. Revelation chapter 17, verse 8. You can never change this beast kingdom that we're in. This Nahash. You can vote in Mr. Obama. You can vote in the Jezebel Clinton. You can vote in every swine and every dog there is. You're not going to change anything. Nothing. There's only one thing that changed us. That's the constitution of the Torah. Look at what the prophet says in, in Gilgiana, Revelation 17, 8. He said, I saw this kingdom power. There's a beast spirit that rules us, isn't it? He said, I, the beast that, that I saw was, he had an identity, was Nahash. Isn't that the spirit that rules us, Nahash? Surely y'all will not destroy me. I'm nice. But do you think I'm nice? Surely you won't do anything to me. I'm sweet. But what about me? Am I sweet? See, that's Nahash. It's not. And shall ascend out of the depths of hell. This kingdom power that rules in us today, it is from hell. It is not from Yah. And shall go in to perdition. Hear this now. It shall go into perdition. I want you to hear this. Hear me! Your house had already established for the power of Hashatan, his kingdom authority in us, that beast that has deluded us and made us deny Yah shall go into perdition. Come there. I'm going to read every word carefully. And they that dwell on the earth, they're going to wander. That's what we're doing now. We're wandering back and forth between two opinions. Our opinion and the opinion of Yah. How long shall we halt between two opinions? Uh, this is what we're wondering. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what I'm going to do. Not, this is what's going to Why are you wondering? Can I show you right here? Whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. From the foundation, he didn't write the dirty damn dog's name in that. There were sons of perdition. He didn't write the Jezebel's name in that. And you religious prostitute, he did not write your name in that. He's going to sing out of hell and claim all of them from the foundation. Just says, he's not worth a damn. The name shall not go in the book. My mama, you're wicked. Mama, you're wicked, papi. You as well. I don't take nothing back. I don't take nothing back from the foundation of the world. Oh, I know what the sons of perdition are like. I'll show you. The names were never written in the book. Can I read it again? May I please, son? It says they shall wander. Don't you find the people wandering? They halt between an opinion of the flesh and the, and the opinion of the ruach. I don't know. Well, you know, he said, well, I, I don't take nothing back, I say. I don't take it back if I said it about your daughter, your son. Your daughter's a Jezebel, your son is weak. I don't take it back. I don't take nothing back. Your mama is a liar. She's still a liar. They walk in their lies. They celebrate their lies. And they 
walk in their falsehoods and they're part of it. She's a damn liar. There's a little daughter that calls. She's been calling me and emailing me for years. She was about 16 when she started doing it. She's in college now. And she listened. And I know she's listening today. She said, do I study on the ship at Riyak? I said, no, just take time to show fat the rest. And she says to me, because she's troubled now at college. She's seeing things that I'm talking and telling her. All of these things. She's seeing that college is not what it had alluded to be in the phantom of her mind. She is seeing that. And I said, the women there, the vast majority is nothing but whoredom and drunkenness. She says, you know, that's right. I said, don't give a damn. And I talked that way to her about the social activities. Don't be a part of it. I said, you're brighter than that. There's nothing you can't do, young daughter. Come out of that cauldron of wickedness. She's 19. And so when we finished, I said, I must go, daughter, all right? She's asking me questions, and what I say, oh, I, I didn't know that. Well, just one more question. I answer her question because she's very, her questions, and she's precious. She's not trying, well, well I don't believe it's that way. Brought up in the church of God and Christ all of her life. And she's finding out that it's all false and fallacious and full of lies. And she's 19 years old, she's a young woman. I said, make sure you tell your parents. You talk to me. She said, oh, react. She says, you're my daddy. I, I said, if you don't tell them, I will come there with a switch and fan you. She said, okay. I said, you make sure you let them know. I know she's a woman, but I'm a man too. And I talk loud so my Raphael can hear me. I don't hide nothing. It says this, whose names... Is the word name with that S, does it make it plural? Yes. Whose names were not hatab, written in the book of life. Before the foundation stone was laid, he knew who was perdition. Yes. And what he's trying to show us, he said, you know they're wicked and you gravitate to them. That's all right. You give them your strength. You give them mind love and you don't even give a damn about me. Y'all loves himself now. He loves himself a whole lot. The names were not written in the Lamb's book from the foundation of the world. What does that simply state? Y'all knew he was going to say, look, when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is, for he was one the son and the master of perdition. And those names that are not written in the heart of Yah, you will know whose names that are written. I want to give you an example of that. I want to give you an example of what we should do as a nation of people. You can't save your sons and your daughters. I won't waste my time praying for them. I won't pray for them that ask me. I won't. They asked Yahshua, he prayed not for the world. He said, Father, I pray not for the world, but I pray for them uh, that you have given unto me. I don't pray for mom. I don't pray for aunts. I don't pray for brothers and sisters. I don't pray. I, you're there in your hand. There are folks that call me and say, well, can you pray for me for that? Pray for my son. I say, well, you know, what if y'all wants to kill him? Well, you know, I said, well, I pray y'all kill him. Kill him. Destroy his flesh. That peradventure he, his nephew may be your shach. Oh, I don't want that to happen. No, kill the dog. Perfect, you may save him. Perfect, his name is written. If it takes death to fulfill the promise of Yah, what is a few days of a, like a vapor smoke here compared to the eternity of the kingdom? That's silly. Trade off this life, lifestyle for the kingdom. Hear this, Yisrael. He is the prophet, the messenger unto Yisrael. Yes, scale. I want to show you something here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has raised us up to show us in us what the power of perdition is. When Yah destroys, he destroys. He doesn't think like us. Can you mathematically create with formulas uh, one molecule of air or bloods? You can't do it. 
So why would you challenge that kind of thinking when hell you can't add a few numbers together? Why would you challenge his mind when you don't even challenge your wicked ways? Hear what the Torah says. Ezekiel, Ezekiel, yes, again, chapter 14. This messenger said, Yah says, I'm going to punish the wicked. We that are in this hour, he gives us warning. We better take heed. It says in yes, scale, Ezekiel chapter 14, verse 12. It says, the dabarim, the dabarim, the word of Yah. It bow, it came, it entered. When the word of Yah comes, it must enter into your mind, your heart. He said, came again to me, saying, this is what Yah says. He called him Bain or Bin Adom. He said, Bain Adom. He said, when the land sinned against me, we haven't sinned against Yah, have we? We sinned against Yah by Ma'al. We have transgressed. What is transgressing? We are unfaithful. We're not faithful to the commands of Yah. We will lie and cheat. We will steal and we'll rob. Listen to what Yah said. We know that even his land, and we are the land of Yah. We are the land of Yisra'ya. His people, we are the nation collectively, individually, that shall uh, be granted the promises uh, of the inheritance of the land that he promised unto our forefathers. We're going to reign in that nation, in that land, and restore for 1,000 years a day uh, in the presence of Yah. He says they have ma'al, they have been unfaithfully, they have been treacherous like a wild wolf. Uh, what? They have been grievous, uh, he says, uh, that I will stretch out my hand upon uh, it, upon my nation, the people. And I will break off the staff of bread thereof. Uh, he's going to take away the bread. What, what do you mean the bread that we ate? The bread we eat daily? No. No, not that bread. Amos said, says to us that in that day, this hour that we end, there shall be a famine sent from Almighty Yahweh. It shall not be a famine of lechem, of bread. But it shall be a famine of the hearing of the Torah of Yah. Our ears are heavy. They have wax heavy. We got every kind of thing in our ears, our own zen, except love for Yah. You love your mama more than you love Yah. He tells us to love him with everything. And when you learn how to love him, he'll show you how to love mama. And show you how to correct mama. Show you how to correct daddy. And show you how to correct son and all of them. Get out of my damn face, boy. You're not coming in here like that. I say, get this crazy man off these grounds. Get him off. You don't come here. Can I tell you what the fool did? They love each other, though. I gave them some sweet potatoes. I said, you give your sister some of those. He went ballistic. I say, hold up, buddy. You don't do that here. You may do it somewhere else, boy. You can't even walk. I said, take all of them from him. You take them. I'm not going to appease you. I'm not fearful of you. He didn't know how to handle that. You know what he says to me? I'm sorry. You better be sorry. You answer fool according to his folly. Fool would act like a fool, you answer him like that. You don't say, well, okay. No, 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 you don't, no, 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 not here. You could do that out there in your house. This is my house. Yeah. You're not going to do that here. Take them all from him. You take them. He says, I will break off to their bread. Yah is the one that's going to send the famine. He is the one that's going to send the ra'a. It's not going to be for bread. We get enough bread, don't we? We get enough bread to eat. We need to let him. We need the body of Yahshua. We need to eat that bread. You got a thirst. We need a thirst for the living water, the Maya. We don't thirst for water. We thirst for sodi pop and everything else. We don't thirst for water. And for the hearing of Yah's Torah. The hearing, the shimach, and open of our ears. 
And he says that, yes, says he's going to send a famine in Yeskel uh, upon it. He's going to cut off, he's going to cut out. Uh, he's going to destroy both Benadom, Benadom and beasts from the land. He's destroying you and your beastly spiritual nature that doesn't love him. He's going down into the g- gates of hell as a witness uh, against you. And he says, I want to tell you something. We're trying to save a wicked son and a daughter. That's meant for perdition. He says, though, these three men. He says, if Noach, the one where the promises of Yah rest. That's what his name means, rest. He says, and Dan Yael, if Dan Yael, knowing that Yah is my judge. We don't fear that because we don't believe that Yah is our judge. He says, and also if you, but his name implies Hated, and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. You're not hated of your daddy for his name's sake, your mama, your sons, and your daughters, and they all hated your shoe. They all turned against him. They embrace you. They love you. They want to be around you. You want to be around your drunken and your wicked kin folks and all that. It's wrong. We are not of that fellowship. We are the fellowship of the house of Yisraya. You understand? He said, though these three men, those these three men were in this hour, this day, they were in it, they shall only nasal, they shall only snatch away, they will shall only deliver by their own nephesh, by their own sadiqah, their own righteousness, by their own righteousness, says the master almighty Yah. They will only deliver themselves by their own righteousness. You hear me? No other way. We're going to be hated of all men for his name's sake. Yeshua said, but you that endure unto the end, the same shall be your shock. I don't care if my kinsmen hate me. I don't care how they speak against me. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they perceive of me. I don't care what you think of me. I don't care how you feel of me. All man can leave me. That's all right. Uh, no man is going to leave me, but a boy will. A little boy will, but a man. Come on, preacher. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. I'm not a soldier. I'm a warrior. And that's big time. If these men, they will only save themselves. Hear this in the next verse of Yes Scale 1415. He says, if I call the noisome beast, he's talking about this beastly spirit or the Ra, this evilness of your mind that gnaws against you. If I call the beast to pass through the land, and they destroy it, they spoil it so that it is desolate, there's nothing. And no man may pass through it because of the intimidation and the fear of the beast. He said, those, these three men were in it. And this is what Yah says. He says, as I live, as I have life in me. Hear this, please. As I have life in me, says the master Yahweh, they shall not sound, they shall deliver Neither sons are not going to deliver daughters. They should only but deliver themselves. But the land shall be desolate, devastated. It's going to be a land that is so devastated. They won't even try to convince son, wife, daughter. They will only convince themselves by the promises of Yahweh. They're not going to try to make them feel at ease with them or appease them. In this hour, you're not going to save the perdition. You save yourself from this untoward, wicked generation. You give no space to the devil. I don't play with the wicked. I have no wicked friends. So if I fall from here, I'm on my own. That's why the Torah tells us to make friends with unrighteous mammoth. So if you fall, you got someone you can go to. I go to no one if I fall, but get on my face before Yah. 
and find me that place of solitude to just wait until the change come and wait on the end of time. And so that's why men love friends with the world because when they go to the world, they can draw from the world. They depend upon the world because they love the world. And the reason they love the world because the love of Yah is not in him. If any man loves the world and cares for the world, it's because the love of Yah is not in that man. And when the world loves you, Yahshua said, you're going to be hated of all men for my name's sake. So if the world loves you, you have no power of this truth in you. The world despised me just like we despise me. What is the sword? In the next verse he says in verse 17, yes, Gail. Let's move quickly. I want to finish. Yours says, or if I bring a sword upon the land and say, this is what he says now. He says, swords, go through the land. And I want you to kill, I want you to karath, cut off man and beast from it. Kill them all. Kill the babies. Do you think that in the first world there were not babies these size and babies that sucked on the breast of the mother? I don't understand this generation. Yah loves himself. And they were all perdition. They were all perdition. I don't understand that. That's why I say it baffles me that parents say they love their children and they don't give a damn. They don't raise them in the nurturing of Yah, teaching them how to love and to be kind. They don't do that. This is what Yah says if I send the sword. What sword? Hold that in Yeskel 1417. I want to show you the sword, all right, quickly. But hold that, we're coming back to Yeskel. To Helium, David says in Psalms 149, verse 6, he tells us we should not have terror of our enemies at all. That we say, let the high praises of Yah, let it be in our mouths. We got everything but the high praises of Yah. We got folly. Yes, but we don't have the high praises of Yah. He said, let it be in their mouth. And he said, in our hands, a two-edged sword in our hands. And that shall what be in our hands. We should have the power of Torah in our yards, in our hand. Your sure is the right hand of Yah. He sits at the right hand. We let the praises of Yara be in our mouth, in our hand. We're ready to cut. We're ready to destroy. We're ready to bring down the opposition of Yoshua Hamashiach. We're ready to bring down the sons of perdition. That's what ought to be in our hands. The two heads. So we got folly and playfulness and sinfulness in our hands. That's what we have. We clown like jackasses. In the mouth of Yah, what you think is coming out of his mouth? Revelation 1.16. Revelation 1.16. And he had in his right hands, what? Seven stars. The seven ruachim. The seven spirits of Yah. He had this menorah of light in his hand. And out of his mouth, and out of his mouth went a sharp to its sword. And his counter was as the sun shining in his strength. Out of his mouth, that's what ought to be in our hands. The promises of Yah. We lay our hands to the plow and we turn back. We're not fit for the kingdom. You're not going into Yah's kingdom. You can, you can, you can, you can sashay around all righteous. You can appease yourself in your damnable wickedness. You don't lay your hands to the works and the labors of Yah. And you find pleasure in the world and seeking out the activities of the world. You're going to die that way. I don't care who you are. It should be a two-edged sword in our hand. Hell, today they got a smartphone, and all you see, they're working that damnable thing. I said to one, that's all you do. You stay on that thing. You work it all the time. Something is not right. Something is not right with a man. That's all he does. A woman, that's all she does is work that thing. Something is not right. Something, is, something ain't right here. Something is not right. I was at a store one day, and this woman, I walked past her. She was on that thing. She was just working it 
Five minutes later, I walk and she's still on. I stayed in the store 15 minutes. So that's, that's, a, that's an eternity for me to stay in the store. That's a fact. I come back 15 minutes, she's still there hot in the cup. I say, isn't that twisted? I, what kind of demonic power of control that has over the people? Yes. That's sick. Yeah. That's twisted. Yeah. That's wicked. Yeah. You own this damn thing all day. You think you're going to yeah. talk to y'all? You don't give a damn about y'all. You don't get offended when I say it like that, but it's the truth. Yeah. The women, they're just insane. They get just help me, y'all. As Ark Shimmery said, they call them smartphone. They're making the people dumb and stupid. Smartphones, you say. They talk to you and everything, don't they? This will talk to you, the word. I want to finish. The sword of Yah, the words of his mouth, the sword. Uh, we carry this Torah, we guard it in our hands. Uh, the hands of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yahshua says this in Matiti, uh, chapter 10, 34. We're talking about the sword. Now, this is what he's going to send. Yahshua said, think not that I've come to send shalom on the earth. Don't think I've come to make you and your daddy to be all right and feel all right with each other. Think not I've come to send shalom on earth. He said, I came not to sh send shalom but a sword. I came to send the sword. And the wicked is the sword of Yah. That's what's cutting us to pieces. Our minds are being lost. He has raised up those sons of perdition. Uh, he's going to prove himself upon them. You're sure didn't come to send no peace in your family. He come to send variance. Uh, son against the father, father against the son, mother against the daughter, mother-in-law against the daughter. That's what he come to do. Yeah. You tell me how many mother-in-laws really get along with their daughter-in-laws. Just be honest. You tell me that. Talk to me, mothers. You tell me the mother-in-laws that get along with their daughter-in-laws. And how many? That's a fact, even the son-in-laws. Let me move quickly. So Yahshua did not come to bring shalom. Yah said if he sent the swords. And yes, Cam, listen to this in Romans chapter 13, 4. This is the sword of Yah. This is what he has sent. Romans 13, 4. He talks about the messengers of Yah. For he is the minister of Yah. And I'm a minister for your tav and your excellence. But if you do that which is evil, you better be afraid of him. You better hide from him, for he bears not the sword in vain. For he is a minister of Yah, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that does evil. That's what the Melak, the messengers of Yah, and that's what the ministers of Yah are for. To bring vengeance of Yah's revenge upon us and to show us our wicked ways. This is the sword that Yah is sending to try to get his house right. He's trying to get us right. Shaul says in Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6, 17. Uh, he says for us to take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Ruach, which is the word of Yah. We don't even have that in us, Yisraya. Yeah. We don't love the word of Yah. Yeah. We don't spend time with it. Yes, yeah. We need the word of Yah in us. We need the word of Yah in our minds. Yeah. That's the sword that he has granted us to have. And we can fight against our enemies, the sons of perdition, and we will overcome. Hebrews 4.12. Hebrews 4.12. It says, for the word of Yah is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. It piercing, even the dividing of the ashanda of the nephesh from your life. It takes the breath from your nephesh, from the fullness of the being. Now, that's powerful. I can explain the depths of that. Your living substance is a nephesh. I don't care what no one says. You are, you is a nephesh. You is. We are, you are a nephesh. And what Yah says, I will take, I can separate the life of the nephesh of your being. And yet it lives. I can separate all. That's what the power of the word of Yah is. He said, and even the joints of the marrow. He says, and it will discern your thoughts. And will show you the intents of your heart. That's why we need this word to be preached, taught, exalted in our mouths and praise. We need to do that, Yisraya. You will know that you're a son of perdition if this is not in you. A revelation, Galusia, chapter 2, verse 12. 
It says, and the Melach of the congregation of Pergamos write these things. This is what Yah is saying to us. He which has the two-edged sword or the sharp sword uh, with the two edges. This is Yah talking to us today. What is he telling us to do today? Well, uh, in the 16th chapter of the same, in the 16th verse of the same chapter, he's telling us to repent. He's telling you to repent. Stop doing your damnable wickedness. Change your ways. Change your heart. Get right with Yah. He says, repent or else I will come to you quickly. And I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. When Yah fights against you with his words, woe unto you. So he's commanding us to shub, to turn around, make teshuva. Or he's coming to us with the sword of his mouth. And your shoe is the sword of his mouth. He has put that ruach of your shoe in the messengers today. And the word is supposed to cut and pierce and search out the very finite details of your wickedness. And expose them before all. We're the strong men today. I love strong men. I have a fetish. I got this thing with strong men, old men. I love them. Yeskel says in 14 and 8, those these three men were in it. This is what Yah says, and we know that he lives. As I live, says the sovereign Yah. They shall deliver neither sons nor daughters, but they only shall be delivered, and they shall deliver themselves. What is the righteousness we must have of the Torah? For the Sudicham of Yah is an everlasting Olam via righteousness, and his Torah is the truth. You cannot have righteousness by, by, by the Torah. I don't care. You can go to your religious whole house every Sunday, and even on the Shabbat, it doesn't mean a damn thing. There are those that will deny his name on the Shabbat. They don't keep the Shabbat. They go to the whole houses on Sunday. I will never be a part of anything so filthy like that. I will not. I will not. Were they buried dead in the Baptist house? They were buried dead in the Baptist whole house. You all get caught, but it makes me no different. I won't be a part of it. Some damn devil up there putting that spirit in me, talking about the dead. Let the damn dead bury the dead. I'm not going into the dead houses. And everybody in there is dead in the trespasses of their sin. No damn repentance, no. And they cry because the damn wicked drunkard has died. They cry because she's been a hoe and lived with a man 40 years. He never, yeah, 40, not 40. Never, never showed any kind of passion. The Jezebel is dead and everybody, woo I will not promote a damn deceitful lot like that. I will not. Your mama been in a church of God and Christ, a Methodist, a Baptist, all a damn life. And this lying dog stands over and talking the name. She, she, she gave her life to cross at the early age, at age nine. She was a little lawyer at age nine. She was a damn little thief at age nine. She wasn't thinking about no cross. She performed the ritual of the whole house. I don't care if you all don't like me. This is how you sure talking. They didn't like him, did they? If these three men, if they were alive, see how, like I said, you had a place to bring them in, you wouldn't bring me in. You're bringing the wicked. You're bringing your dirty whole sister down there in Georgia. And your brother, you will not bring me in. Because I will cry aloud and I will not spare not. But you bring them in. You wouldn't bring me in. That's the fact. You will not bring me in. You wouldn't bring me in. They didn't bring Yahshua in. They bring their Jesus in, but they won't bring Yahshua in. You don't get upset, but that's all right. Because you're defending something that is so wrong. So wrong. It's not right. Oh, I got to go and bury my mama. I gotta. He says, follow me. Leave that behind you. If I bury, I bury you here, bury you over there, but I'm not going to one of them filthy whorehouses to bury no money. I got a precious friend. I said, you tell your son, your children, you pass before I. 
I'll come and I'll bury you. We'll go to the cemetery and I'll do that. You know I will. You tell them. You tell them I will come. They don't have to send me no offering. You've been a kind man to me. You've loved me. And I appreciate that. Not many men love me. So when I find a man to love me, I, I love them. I want to show them I love them. There's nothing I will not do. But a man loves me. There's nothing I won't do. I don't hold nothing back. Nothing. I've always been that way. You owe me nothing but to love me. I will love you. Hear this. We're going to finish in a moment. Hear this. Yah says in Yeskel 14 and I see nothing terrifies us. This is, this is why he continued with this great. He said this is, it doesn't terrify us. Yeskel 14, 19. He said, or oh, if I sin. Now who's going to sin this? Yah, the Deborah, this great plague of death. That's what pestilence is. He said, if I send this into the land, and not only that, I'm going to pour out my hema, my fury, upon it in blood, and I will cut off from it man and beast. He said, although my death, and I sent the death milak, did he not send the death milak in the midst of pestilence over Mr. Raim and kill all the firstborn? He killed them all. And only where the blood was applied to the post, the two pillars of Torah, the testimony of Yahshua and the testimony of Moses, which is to love Yah with all and you to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And Yahshua showed that unto us as a nation. He showed us he loved us, that he died for us. And we're not willing to lay down our lives and pick up the stake and follow him. We get up in the morning, pick up sin and our own wicked ways and our own corrupt ways. And the corrupt thought that we went to bed when we picked that lie up. We pick up our sinful, wicked ways in the morning. We don't pick up the banner as he taught us the banner, Yorkshire, which is love. We don't want that banner flying over us. We pick up our corruption and our lies and our hatred and our dissatisfaction and our distaste. We don't pick up that banner, the love of Yah, Yisrael, Yah. He said, although I sin this and I bring all this upon you. He said, there are those that will be faithful. There will be the men like Noah that are rest in the assurance of the Torah. There will be men like Daniel. Yah. They will know that Yah judge all things. There will be men like Eeyore. They will hate this flesh that is so corrupt and spotted with sin. Sure they will. We don't hate ourselves in our ways. These are the messenger, the men of strength. We don't need coddling. I don't need no coddling. I don't need mama's coddling. I don't need sister's coddling. I don't need aunt's coddling. I don't need brother's coddling. I need Yisrael's love. Oh, I want to see Yeshua look upon his face. In the presence of Yisrael, I see his face. Oh, when the light of love do shine from our face, we know that Yahshua, he is in you and me. Oh, when you see me, you see Yah. Well, if that's not the case, greater is the power of his testimony, his visit in me, than the power of the witness of the sons of perdition in the world. All right. I'm not waiting to get the power in the sky. I'm waiting to see the power of his fruit here. That's what I want. Hallelujah. That's right, Todaya, my friend. Yes, 1420, though Daniel... Noach and Daniel, these men, Eyo, were, they were in and they live. This is what Yah's giving us three witnesses already. This, he said, I want you to know. Let every word be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses. He says, those these men were alive, they should deliver neither son. We're trying to deliver sons and daughters. Because we love them more we love Yah. We don't consider him. We worry about son, we worry about daughter, grandson, and grandbaby. All of that, but we don't think about Yah now. They should but deliver Nassau their own nephesh by their own righteousness. 
Our righteousness is not of the Torah in the sense that we go and look at that line and follow that. It is a liveliness of the line that we follow because it is of truth. We rejoice in that. So it's not a burden on us to do what Yah says. The Shabbat is not a burden. I don't care if we lose job, houses, and everything. It's not a burden. He did not promise us houses or land. He said that we have food and raiment. Be there, we're content. And if he can clothe us with a body of flesh and cause that to live, he can put a shack over us. Verse 21, for this says the mighty sovereign, how much more when I send my great judgments upon Yerushalayim, the city. We've lost our salt, haven't we? We've lost our enthusiasm for Yah, I expri. When the salt loses its fragrance, its tastiness, it is tough for nothing to be thrown out and trodden on the foot. And we'll let every kind of demon power trot in our minds. Every kind of unclean, four-footed thing is trotting in our minds. Everything that is violent against you, we allow it to trot and walk upon the place of the testimony and trap with the blood on the foot. We think we're going and we're going to hell. He said, we'll send my judgment upon Yerushalayim. We've lost the savor. We've lost the flavor. We have no light in the city. We're not the city that our Zachim remind us that sit upon the hill that cannot. That's the Yerushalayim he's talking about. That Yerushalayim over there is full of the spirit of Sodom and Egypt. We are that city, Yerushalayim. We are, you know, you can have a nation in name all you want to without the, without the people that constitute the nation or the city. It means nothing. New York City is known because of its, its commerce and the people there. You take them all out, it'll be nothing. We are the Yerushalayim. They shall inhabit the new or renewed Yerushalayim. 15,000, 1,500, and say that way, that way, that, and even that high. How about that? That's a city there. Ain't no city like that in the world. Look at this. He shall send the noise and beast and all of that. And then he says in Yes, scale 1422, I want to. He says this, yet behold therein, in the midst of all of that judgment, hear this. Of all I've said today, a few more things. He's in the midst of all of death and corruption. He said, therein shall be a remnant. Just a small bit. He calls it a polet. Polet. That shall be small residue. They shall be... Polet implies they're fugitives. You know what a fugitive is. One that... A fugitive, no one knows he's a fugitive. They run and they hide. And we hide in truth and Torah. That's why he said there will be a palette, just a fugitive, one that is hiding, one that is hiding under the wings of Yah, shall be brought forth out of all of that, just a palette. He said, both sons and daughters, behold, they shall come forth to you, and you shall see their way and their doing, and you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Yerushalayim. It's one thing that the remnant, they're confident to see Yah's hands of correction. I don't care if it's on son, daughters, I don't care if it's on children, I don't care who, you, me, my brother, my sister, you're confident. to you see the hand of Yah correct them. Correct me, Yah, in your judgment. And not in your anger, least you bring me to naught. I won't sigh, but with nothing but this book. And my brother's white, right, I will die for him. I will walk with him. I will strengthen his hand. I will go to battle for any ach, any achot. But for a man that turned his heart away from truth uh, and seek out his own remedies, I will not, I will not, I will not even embrace a man like that. I will not empower a man in his own self-righteousness to, to proceed in a way that he is weak and cowardly or a woman that is rebellious and vile. I won't do it. You can. I won't. There are great vessels in Yah's house, many kinds. I want to be a vessel of gold. That's what I want to be. I may miss it by the fullness of the long shot and be a vessel of dishonor. That's all right. But yet I'm his vessel. I've dishonored him more than any man. But yet he has called and elected. I am his soldier. I'm his warrior. Oh, don't be hypocritical. You've dishonored your mama. You've dishonored your daddy. 
We all have done that. Don't, don't, don't play with me, all right? All right, don't, don't go that way with me, okay? You, you. Mama tell you not to do this and you, you did it. That's dishonor. Here's how we think that way. Well, I never dishonor my mama, liar. Girl, I told you, don't, don't you do that again. I'm going to whip your backside. And when you got older, you really dishonor. Mama, you can't. Be. Mama, I know. I, I'm a woman. I thought I raised my chillings. Now, Daddy, I know how to raise my chillings too. Now, Daddy, you don't even know how to raise yourself, heifer. Cow. They call you no heifer. Hallelujah. He's going to comfort us in the ways of the donor. And yes, scale 14, 23. And they shall be comforted. And he shall comfort you. When you see their ways, when you see their ways and their doings. So we must see their ways and their doings. And you shall know that I have done. When we see the ways of the wicked. Listen, I want you all to hear this, please. Yah says, this is your comfort. When you see your sons and your daughters, you see your relatives and even you and me, your brothers. When you see them doing wrong and you see my hand upon them. Yah says in yes scale, and they shall comfort you. Even the wicked. Why? When you shall see their ways and their doings. And you will know. You will know what I've done to them. That I have not done this without a cause. You will know I'm justified. You will know I'm right. He said, when you see that, when you understand, you say, you're so right, yeah. He'll say, you know I haven't done that without a cause. He says, that all that I have done in it, says, yeah. See, he will allow us to see his righteous judgment. That when you see what I do. And you see their ways. You're going to be comforted. But you kill my son. That's right. You'll be comforted. You'll know that I didn't do it without a cause. Your name was in the Lamb's book of life. From the foundation of the world. No names are added. You don't get added to that register. It was from the foundation. The names were there. He knew the end from the beginning. So let nobody trick you. The Calvinism and all these lies and all this filth they're spewing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this is what we should do here as Shaul says. I mean as Kepha says in the book of Acts. Hallelujah. I will read this in the book of Acts. In the book of Maaseth. Shulishim, the Acts, the works. The Shulishim, the apostles. In the writings of the book of Acts here, in chapter 2, verse 40, and with many other words did Kepha testify and exhort. I exhort you by the same measures as Peter, saying, deliver yourself, save yourself. Acts 2, 40. Deliver yourself. By what righteousness? Deliver yourself from this this untoward, this crooked, this perverse, this wicked violer, this unfair, this forward. To Pucha, deliver yourself from this forward and wicked generation. It is a generation that is untoward Yisrael. It is that kind of generation. And I want to take the last few moments to give us an understanding of this tapucha or generation that is untoward that you must save yourself from, all right? You're not going to save anyone. They are sons of perdition. Yes. You deliver yourself from this tapucha, this corrupt, wicked, vile generation. You must. To understand, we must go back to the better sheet, what this forward generation is. It is found in the writings of Dibari, the writings of Deuteronomy. Moshe speaks to us here. Hallelujah. He speaks of the judgment that will come upon us for our sins and our wickedness. He gives us a word of great comfort here in Debarim 32.20. And Yah said, and he said, this is what Yah says. Hear me, Yisrael. He said, I will sota, I will cancel, I will conceal, I will hide my face that it will not be recognized, my ponim, from them. From who? I will see 
what they're in. Again, we're talking about the Acharith. I will see what they're in shall be. He said, for they are a very froward. We're a generation that is tapuka. We're cruel. We're evil. We're sadistic. He said, this is a very froward generation. And the reason we're that way, we're children with no imuna. We have no faith. We don't have faith in Yah. You have faith in God. And the God of your belly. Yes. That is the sure sign of a forward generation. Tapuka. They don't believe Yah. It is a generation. That's what a forward gener a forward generation is. That's what a generation that is untoward. How do you know? Because I'm a student. Yeah. I go to a little different degree of study than you. All right. So I'm privileged to teach you this. All right. Yeah. I'm privileged. Not you. I'm privileged. Yeah. That Yah trusts me to open up the simplicity that I may show you. He calls it a tapuka, a forward generation. We must save ourselves from this generation. Why? Because they have no imuna. How do I know when someone has faith or without faith? When Yah is not the centrality of their conversation, they're like, they have no faith. When they can talk about food and folks in the world and what the wicked are doing and conversation about the wicked and they talk about foolish things and about to play, laughter. Your foolish generation of people. Well, Yah's not on their mind. Yah's not in their conversation. When there's no praises in their mouth, they have no imuna. That's what a forward generation is. That's what an untoward generation is. It doesn't believe Yah. Well, I know it says that, but you know, I got my beliefs. You ever heard that? Well, I know what Riyadh said, but he's wrong. How can you tell me I'm wrong when you don't even study? It's amazing these weak men and women, they don't even open the book and they can tell me I'm not right about matters. How can you tell someone they're wrong when you don't even study well, you can't even quote five scriptures. How are you going to tell me I'm wrong? How? That's crazy. That's just insane. This is a generation with their children, of the forward. That's their nature. They don't love Yah. They have no concern for the things of Yah. And they have no faith. They don't pray. They don't pray, deliver me, y'all. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my, my, my son, son in law, help him now. Yeah, I take this son in law, my daughter, I put him in your hands. I do what Shaul says you take one like that and turn him over to hell yeah. for the destruction. Let him fall down and break his neck and his flesh fall off his bone. That he says, Yeshua, 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 I need you, O oh, deliver. You will know that that one is a child of Yah. I need you. I'm such a sinner. Wicked and weak, oh Yah, oh, deliver me, Yeshua, from all of my sins. No sweeter name. In the name of Yahshua, oh, I sin against you, Yah. My flesh represents my sin, for the skin worms eat me. I'm a wretched beast on my way to hell. Whatever you do, Yah, is all right with me. Write my name from the foundations of the Olam, show me my name is there. Let me die in Yeshua. And the old folks, they say, they will say, bring me on home. Put me in the graveyard. Oh, let this flesh rot, for I have been rotten by you. Hallelujah. I'm not loved by many men, but that's all right. Listen to me, Yisrael, nothing gets me down. I'm just being honest. I don't lose no sleep over nothing. That's just the truth. Nothing. Can you imagine Yorkshire going to that stake? Where were the men? I want to close with a few verses here. Concerning the nature. I want to show you what a forward generation is. 
Mishli, the Moshel, the Proverbs of Shalomo. You know that this is a froward, a tapucha generation of mine. Proverbs 2.14, he says that one that is froward, they rejoice to do evil. They get happy. They frolic in evil. They don't mind, and, and it's no problem with them. They rejoice to do evil, and this is what they do. They delight in the frowardness of the wicked. When they find wicked people, they say, oh, hey, girl, oh, my, my, my. Man, give me some love, baby. I ain't going that way. When you find a frowardness mind, they rejoice. They, they, they're happy when they're doing something evil. When they're laughing, they're not happy. When you when you find someone that's forward, they're laughing and haven't done anything. You start talking about, let's sing your shoe, your shoe, your shoe. They all climb up. Your shoe is my friend. I love that name of your shoe. Bless this and they get mad. I know they will, mother. He saved my nephesh. He delivered me from the gates of hell. Oh, I rejoice and just start dancing. They get quiet. You can hear a rat urinate on cotton. They're getting angry. They're getting mad. Why is he doing that? Why is she singing? Don't tell me I don't know what I'm saying. You're sure, you're sure. Save me, my friend. Oh, yeah. Sure, save me. Deliver me. But they can laugh and they can clown. They can act like jackass. They can talk about folly. They can talk about the wicked. They want to find out what that wicked one is doing, that dog is doing. They want to know all of that. Talk, talk, girl. Talk. Man, tell me. What, 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 what. Come on. I want to hear about that. No, I don't want to hear that bullshit thing. Don't come to me with that jive. I don't want to hear it. I don't give a damn. Let someone begin to sing. He reached down, pulled me out. Out of the depths of all of my wickedness, vile and unclean. I'm talking about yesterday, not last week, or the month before that. Yeah, oh, this last hour of my mind was in the thralls of sin. You're sure not on my mind, my vanity and my loss, oh yeah overshadowed me because I don't love you say me you're sure deliver me from my sins oh how wicked I am I found myself talking loud like I said you're such a wicked man help me yeah she said what did you say I said that's all right I'm all right let me close with this these last two verses Proverbs 6 14 it says the puka frowardness untoward in the love when one has that he devises mischief mirma continuously and he sows discord when you find someone that is evil like that they always devise a mischief lying against your ach your achim your chuchim you always sow discord well he said that and she did that well what did you do then Tell me what you did. You tell me what you did. How many people come to someone and tell them what they did? <laughs> I love this man because he's real to me. He's genuine with me. He doesn't hold back anything from me. I close with this one, Zachary. You find those so in discord continuously and do not want that unified front. It's sad. These are sons and daughters of perdition. They're going to die that way. That's why I keep telling you all, I warn you. The way you are constantly, that's what's in you. You're mean, you're evil, you're a liar. I hate liars, and I'm not going to ever stop saying that. There was one that said he always reminding us. Well, Yah reminds us. Because that one wasn't real with Yah. Yeah. The liar. Yeah. Like the mother, so is the daughter. Hear this. Yeah. Proverbs 10.32. It says the lips. The fifth, the mouth. The lotion, the lips 
of the righteous know what is accepted. Yeah. So righteous man know what Yah accepts. The righteous daughter, you know what Yah accepts. But the mouth of the wicked speak to Puka. A righteous man knows what Yah says, and a righteous woman does it. But when you find forward people, they never talk about the beauty of Yah, about the covenant of Yisrael. They never confess their sins to you, have they? Has anyone come to you recently and confessed their sins? But you know everybody else's business, don't you? I don't care about other folks' business. And all things we do, rock you this day, Yah, bless your nation, your people scattered abroad. Go with us, guide us in your Torah. For we are eternally told out for all of the great blessings, the simple blessings of this day. Protect us all in your Shua's name. We pray for the Shalom, shalom of Yerushalayim and your nation scattered abroad. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah.